We're overlooking the Cooper's Ferry site, which is located just upstream of the mouth of Rock Creek. And in this area, we can see some pretty dramatic things, geologically speaking, that have happened in the past that are relevant to understanding the site itself and time periods before and after the occupation of Cooper's Ferry. So on the right-hand side of the canyon, we have evidence of a very large landslide that originated from a place that's called Devil's Garden. And roughly half a million years ago, a side of the canyon over here dropped down and shot material across the canyon. And we can see evidence of this on the left-hand side of the river. We actually see a ranch station sitting on top of what is a smaller lobe of the Devil's Garden slide. The Devil's Garden slide was so large that it actually caused the Salmon River to aggrade or store sediments behind it to a height of nearly 600 feet. And as the river built up material behind it, it brought its channel up higher and higher, and eventually it got to a point where it could begin to erode through the Devil's Garden slide and bring the river back to a more of original state of adjustment. As we see a little bit down slope, from this ranch station in the distance. There's a series of small terraces that go up to the left-hand side of the river. These are terraces created by the lower Salmon River Canyon as it cut through the Devil's Garden slide and adjusted its elevation of the channel, cutting through, eroding, moving material out, kind of cleaning the canyon out again. As we can see, at least from this stretch, large tributary canyons are unusual. And most of the time, they're controlled by structural features, and what I mean by structural features is fault systems where the bedrock is being affected by some kind of movement along a linear plane. And in this case, we have a fault line that runs down the mouth of Rock Creek Canyon, Rocky Canyon, and extends out across the Salmon River up to the edge of the landslide in its downstream position. This fault is what we call a normal fault, meaning its movement is in the vertical plane. Roughly 2,000 years ago, we think the fault line moved again. And when it moved again, it caused the downstream portion of the Lower Salmon River Canyon in this area to be uplifted, perhaps as much as six meters, which caused a disequilibrium in the downstream gradient of the Salmon River's channel. And as the river ran into this uplifted part of the bedrock of the canyon, it would have been forced to first a grade, that is, build up material behind it, getting the channel again once high enough to go over the edge where it could erode upstream and remove this large obstruction. And in the process of removing this uplifted part of the canyon, it adjusted the Salmon River to the position you see today.